Hello and welcome to the Donify MailChimp integration deep dive session. Uh, the aims of this session are to explain how Donify and MailChimp work together and help you send all the right messages to the right people at the right time. Uh, my name is Robin, I'm the product manager at Donify and I'm going to take you through the functionality. It's not a MailChimp training session as such. Um, we don't sort of specialize in training in MailChimp, but obviously we learned how it works uh, in order to build this integration. And uh, we'll be covering some of the basics as well as some of the more advanced features, uh, advising on some best practice, showing you how it works and how to get started. Um, bearing in mind that you may be watching this as a beginner um, or as a uh, an expert, try and make sure we cover all the ground and some in between um, and we, we do get into some of the slightly deeper aspects of, of Donify um, so we will make sure we try and cover those off in a in an understandable way. So let's have a look at in overview what the um, what the integration is all about. It has basically the following features so allowing you to synchronize the data in your Donify system with the information in your MailChimp lists. So that means um, getting the, the basics across like email address, first name, last name, but also um, allowing you to bring some more nuanced information across like groups and purposes and tags between the systems to enable you to properly uh, target the right people in your email campaigns. Also provides a, a window from uh, Donify through to your MailChimp system uh, so that you can see subscriber history from within Donify on people's timelines and their, their profile in MailChimp. Uh, also enables you to trigger supporter journey campaigns or automations as MailChimp calls them, which is quite a, a neat feature for welcoming people and giving them a sort of a, a journey to go through in terms of communications that you, you have planned after a certain activity. And lastly, it lets you hook up a, a Donify campaign to a MailChimp campaign to enable you to see the, the metrics in Donify um, and, uh, and keep an eye on it without having to dive into MailChimp all the time to see how it's doing. So there are some resources available. Uh, this recording is obviously available um, for you and the slides can be made available without the commentary as well. Uh, you'll find them on our Donify chat Facebook group. So if you haven't joined that yet, please feel free to do so. It's free of charge and there's lots of interesting conversations go on there. Uh, so we, we tend to put some resources on there. There's also our knowledge base, which is at support.donify.com, where you can scroll down to the MailChimp section. Um, just beware, there is a MailChimp legacy section, which is the old integration. What we're talking about today is the new integration. So uh, don't be drawn into that one by mistake. Um, but yeah, our knowledge base covers the whole integration, uh, some FAQs. And of course, if you don't get the answer to your question, then you can put a specific question that you may have into a ticket and our support team will respond to you. And then lastly, MailChimp themselves have their own knowledge base, their own guides and tutorials. So please avail yourselves of them and, 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 and learn how MailChimp works through those. Um, and then obviously there are bits in, in Donify that relate specifically into some of those features and we'll, we'll point those out today. So I want to start with, um, you know, why do we not have email built into Donify? Uh, why do we integrate with something else like MailChimp? And essentially we like many cloud providers have taken the, um, the the philosophy that we don't reinvent the wheel. The MailChimp email wheel has already been invented. So rather than us try to replicate that with our own func functionality within Donify, we thought it better to integrate with a uh, best tool for the job with MailChimp itself. That's the theme right across the functionality with Donify. So apart from the core features within Donify, the things it doesn't have to do, other packages already do perfectly well, we integrate with them. Um, it does mean that everything about one constituent is resolved into one place in Donify, in the CRM. Um, and uh, that gives you the specialist tools then to operate those things with, but it ends up being visible in Donify. And it also means that we can concentrate on being the best CRM we can be, and those tools can concentrate on being the best email tool, uh, online fundraising portal, whatever it is that they're going to be. So 
This slide attempts to encapsulate in one slide the whole integration and what it does. So uh, really, I guess if there's one piece of information you walk away with today from this, this webinar, um, it's being able to understand an overview of what the integration does. So this tries to, uh, to, to show that in visual form. So the key elements are that you have your supporter who might come across your website with on their phone or on their uh, on their desktop computer and then within your website you may have created a form or embedded a form that MailChimp provides you for subscribing people to a list within MailChimp. So that form contains the obvious information, email address, first name, last name, but also contains maybe some more interesting information that you want to capture without it being too onerous when people sign up to your, your email list. So by signing up to the email list via a form within your website, that automatically populates them as a subscriber in MailChimp. And through the integration, there's an instantaneous population of Donify with a new constituent or an update of an existing constituent if we already had them in there by chance in your database. So that process of getting those people into Donify um, is automated via MailChimp. Then there are other ways of getting information into your MailChimp list and it might be that they come into Donify first through someone phoning up perhaps or one of our other integrations maybe through Just Giving or Eventbrite or through the API if you have a custom integration maybe from e-commerce software or something you're going to be populating your Donify through those other sources and then we can update MailChimp from that so we get those people subscribed into your list in MailChimp as well. So that information goes, if you like, in the other direction from Donify across to MailChimp. And then you've got a list in MailChimp ready to send things to. You create a campaign in MailChimp. So you don't, you don't do that in Donify, you do it in MailChimp. That's the specialist tool for the job. Create a campaign, it sends it out. There's an unsubscribe or a, a update your preferences link at the bottom, which is um, they're going to then open up perhaps which provides them with the same form this time pre-populated with their name and their ticks that they made before they can update that or they can altogether unsubscribe that information is then pushed across to Donify as well and then lastly you've got information that comes in from the website direct into Donify such as online donations so when someone gives that can then trigger in MailChimp what we call a, um, a supporter journey or MailChimp calls an automation which is a sequence of emails that you can design in order to send some kind of um, supporter journey to that person over the next few days or weeks and then they can of course still take that unsubscribe option or change their preferences at that point as well. So that's the um, integration I'm just going to run through that briefly again because it's quite important just to get the whole picture in your head so within your website you have a form which people can then subscribe to the MailChimp list which gets updated into Donify automatically. The other way around, data coming from other sources into Donify such as someone calling you or setting up a page and just giving or attending an event. That will populate your Donify system which in turn populates MailChimp to add more people into your list. And then you're going to run campaigns which mean that People will receive an email, they get the chance to adjust their preferences at that point or even unsubscribe, in which case that is done and that's pushed across to Donify as well. And then you might offer online donations on your website, which when working through the Donify widget on your website will come through into Donify, populate MailChimp and optionally kick off a supporter journey. Sequence of emails. So in, in, uh, in summary, that's the... Uh, Thing. So let's let's drill down on some of the concepts now within MailChimp and what they mean and how you can make the most of them with your Donify integration. So first of all, lists. A list is the central component, if you like, or one of the central components to MailChimp, and it's it's a list to which people subscribe. So they subscribe by either the form that we looked at just now, or you might import information straight into your MailChimp, or you might have stuff going in through its API, which is the way that Donify communicates with it. 
Traditionally, um, MailChimp have encouraged people to have multiple lists. So you might have a list for people interested in events, a different list for people interested in volunteers, a different general newsletter list, whatever it is, any number of lists. And that could be a bit like a Venn diagram where you've got multiple people uh, or the same person on multiple lists and uh, sometimes in two, three or four lists. What MailChimp are trying to encourage you to do now through some features that they've added to the system, their system, is to use one central master list. And in doing so, offering you things called groups and tags that would help you segment your list and therefore target the right people within that list every campaign. So you might send campaigns out that never go to the entire list, but each campaign targeted at a, a subset within that list based upon the groups and tags that are defined in there in their system. So we'll look at what groups and tags are and how you get them in there in a moment but uh, the other components you can have on your lists here are merge fields so email address is a merge field, first name, last name, their merge fields. You can add more merge fields. Date of birth for example could be added on there if that was important to you or gender. Bearing in mind it's all personal data that you may or may not wish to be responsible for holding they can be put into merge fields. And then from a list in the sign up forms menu option as you can see on the screen there you can create forms which get embedded in your website you can create pop-ups which pop up on your website um, and you can have standalone forms that you can direct people to maybe from social media and they are the forms that can contain all the appropriate merge fields and groups in order for people to self-select and enter their own information and subscribe to your list and then lastly, hiding away in settings here is a feature called webhooks, which is the thing that is used by MailChimp to automatically post stuff across to Donify when a constituent is entered or added or changed in a list. We'll come on to those in more detail. So let's look at groups now in MailChimp. So groups are the, um, the options, if you like, that people can tick or enter more information about when they subscribe. Let's just head across to another tab on my browser here to show you a form. So here is a form that re relates to my list. So my list, um, we've configured a form and within that list we've created some groups. The group is called emails I want to receive and it's got three checkboxes so people can opt into any or all or some of those um, communications and then they can click subscribe, that pops them into the list and they're subscribed. The way that you set that up is you go into manage contacts, there's an option called groups when that menu drops down, you can add a group, this is a group I've already got, the one we saw just now, emails I want to receive, and then you can put in the various checkboxes that apply to it underneath there, so fundraising events and volunteering. Those groups can appear on sign-up forms, as we just said, but you can also do other nice things with those groups. You can use them for including condi conditional content in your emails. So one group you might have might be whether they are a, a current gift aider or not. Uh, that group can be sourced from Donify, because Donify knows those things. Um, and of course, you're not going to want to self-select whether someone calls themselves a potential gift aider or not. but the fact that that then is a group means you can use that in newsletters, for example, to suggest that they sign up to a gift aid declaration or whatever it's going to be. So groups can be quite powerful tools, not just little tick boxes on forms. And then tags. These are very much like tags in the Donify sense of tags. These are simple on-off tags that you can attach to constituents or subscribers, as they're called, in MailChimp. So similar concept to Donify, you create your available tags. These are all the available ones in my demonstration system and then um, apply them to appropriate subscribers. Now the mapping between Donify and MailChimp will make that automatic. So you can have the corresponding tags in Donify that someone is a high value donor or an active volunteer or a, an event attender that will get mapped across into their MailChimp subscriber record so that you can then segment them according to those tags. And again, you set them up from the contact, um, uh, the, the manage contacts menu within your list, 
tags can only be on or off. If you want something a bit more nuanced, maybe with three states as opposed to just two, then you can create a group instead, but hide that from the sign up form. So a more nuanced example might be the gift aid example where you could have three states. It might be declined, potential and current as their gift aid status. Um, you can't do that with a tag. You've either got yes or no effectively with a tag. These we suggest that you map to corresponding tags in Donify. So that's nice and easy. Tags in MailChimp become tags in Donify. So let's look at um, then the next sort of main pillar of what MailChimp does for you. That is to run email campaigns. So an email campaign is the process of designing and sending out a bulk email communication to a number of people. And traditionally that's been to a list. So everyone on my events list or everyone on my volunteers list. But remember we now have one list and you want to be able to select a segment within that list. So here's how we do it. Uh, you create your campaign, you choose your list. So here's my list here, the A Great Cause mailing list. And then you can choose either the tag that you want to target it. So people who are high value donors, for example, or you can use this new segment idea here, which is like a, a filter that says, send it to people whose emails I want to receive contain a tick in the fundraising box. And therefore, you know, we're entitled to send them a fundraising communication. So just to recap, you can send it to an entire list or a subset. And you can use those groups to then, when you design your email, you can put this little piece of code in here. Um, that's all available in the MailChimp help site as to how to do this. But you can say, if one of these groups is set to potential, so the gift aid group is set to potential, then we can say, have you thought about gift aiding? If so, call our supporter services team. Otherwise, don't put that in there and just continue then with the rest of the newsletter underneath. So that's how you might use a group for conditional stuff. You can also link your MailChimp campaign into your Donify campaign so that you can view email history and timelines and you can see campaign stats in Donify campaign analytics, uh, which we'll unpack how to do that in a moment. But next, let's look at how MailChimp sends information to Donify. So you remember I said that those webhooks in the list will automate the immediate posting of information across from Don from MailChimp into Donify. Uh, so that's what happens. But at the same time, it takes into account the mapping that you have defined in your configuration in Donify. Uh, you can specify the mapping to say which MailChimp groups get mapped across to which Donify purposes, and which MailChimp tags get mapped across to which, or populate which, Donify tags. And you can actually mix them up if you want. A group could populate a Donify tag, and a tag in MailChimp could populate a Donify purpose if you want. But generally, it's that way around. Groups to purposes, tags to tags. So here's what happens. Someone subscribes, or maybe updates their subscription following clicking on the Update My Preferences link at the bottom of an email that you sent them. And they will trim their details in here. And they'll click on the Send or Subscribe button and it will then populate your Donify over here. What that looks like is this. So on the left in MailChimp, we have your subscriber. On the right, we have your corresponding constituent in Donify. The groups that they're in, as a result of clicking all the right boxes, will populate normally their purposes here in Donify. The tags will populate their tags in Donify. Not always that cut and dried. It might, as I say, you might have some groups populating tags and, and vice versa. But then also, you'll notice against their email address on their constituent profile, we have this little MailChimp monkey button, which you can click, and that will pop up a form which shows you, it's like a lens through to their, their subscriber record in MailChimp. It shows you the current state of that. So it's a three-star subscriber. They're booked into various... Um, opted into various groups here, I've got various tags here, click rate, open rate, and so on. So that's a sort of live display within Donify of their status in MailChimp. What happens when the same person subscribes twice? So let's say Peter Baker here subscribes once with his personal email. That's great. He gets created here in Donify as a new constituent with his email address 
down there. All his groups and tags are nicely mapped. But let's say he comes along to your website, you know, a day or two later and says, I'm going to resubscribe. Um, but this time I'm going to subscribe with my work email address instead. What happens? Well, because MailChimp is based upon the uniqueness of an email address, it creates a new constituent for him. It doesn't know that he at work is the same patient, same person as, as he at home uh, because it's a different email address. So creates a new subscriber for him. And because of that separation, it creates a new constituent for him here in Donify. So you might know then that that's the same person. You might do some sort of check. Uh, in the background uh, to see whether Peter Baker occurs more than once on your database. Yes, he does. And you might then use a connection to say, let's create a, a link between these two to say they're in fact the same person. Um, but actually this behaves in exactly the same way as any popular consumer facing e-commerce system might, someone like Amazon. If you set yourself up once with your home address, your home email, it's going to set you up a customer account at Amazon with all of your preferences according to what you buy on that account. But if you set yourself up a new account with your work email address and maybe buy different things, it'll set you up with a different account and maybe a different purchasing history. And really, Amazon don't care that you're two different customers, um, but the same person. Uh, it's just the way that those systems work. So Donify um, mir mimics that in a way and mirrors that by creating a separate constituent. Turning it around, how does Donify send information to MailChimp? So this is a bit different. Rather than being automated, this is pushed across on demand. So you have to do something in order to make that happen. Um, the same mapping occurs, so the mapping is two-way. So whatever tags and purposes you've got mapped, it works the other way around. It'll populate those groups and tags in MailChimp accordingly. But the way you initiate a push from Donify across to MailChimp is you use a, uh, use a constituent list to do it. So you're going to create yourself a constituent list of everyone in your Donify who has uh, information um, about, that has an email address in their record and that you wish to be pushed across. And that will then offer you a little button on the results, which when you click will offer you a verify screen saying, there are so many constituents here that will be added because they don't exist in MailChimp already. So many that will be updated and there are so many that will be unsubscribed because you've clicked on a button in Donify that effectively unsubscribes them. So you get a preview. You can click on each one of those to download a CSV file to, if you're curious about who's in each of those categories. You can then switch on the update function and then click on the blue update MailChimp button. That's the point at which it then updates MailChimp and populates or updates those uh, or unsubscribes those subscribers in your MailChimp list. But an interesting scenario arrives when we look at Donify uh, compared to what's available in MailChimp because as you're aware possibly with Donify you have the ability to have up to six email addresses on a single constituent record. That's because you have personal work and other contact detail locations at the top there on those tabs and within each of those tabs you've got preferred and alternate email addresses so up to six in all. If you do have more than one email address specified you can use this preferred channel. If I just uh, help you see that a bit more easily I'll pop into another tab on my screen here which is looking at Peter Baker and his preferences here. We can see we can choose of his well, this one doesn't have many email addresses, but you can choose which of his email addresses we use as the preferred one. So back to what does Donify do with this when you push that information across to MailChimp. Donify has to decide, because it needs this one-to-one -one link with, with MailChimp, has to decide which email address to use. How does it do that? Well, the first thing it checks for is whether there is a preferred email or not. So if you've pointed your preference at other address email one, then it will use that if that's your preferred. If there is no preference, it'll work down through them all in order. And the first one that it, first email address that it encounters by checking personal email one and two, and then work email one and two, and then other, first email address it encounters is the one that it will send across to MailChimp. Okay, and then those two records will be linked as it were. Okay, so let's change gear and look at campaigns again how do you um, what do you get when you link a MailChimp campaign to a Donify campaign 
Well, first off, it gives you visibility in Donify of what's happening in the Mailchimp campaign. So at the foot of the Campaign Analytics tab, and again, I'll just go into another tab on my browser here to show you that in a bit more clarity. So as you know, in a campaign, we have a campaign here that we've set up, which is the corresponding campaign to the one in Mailchimp. You have to set this up, and my advice is that you set it up with the same name. So newsletter 03 2019, you might want to put Mailchimp after that to make it obvious that it's joining to a Mailchimp campaign. Uh, and then on the analytics page, at the bottom, you get the option to then pick which of the Mailchimp campaigns it belongs to. So I've got three newsletter campaigns ready to go here, one in March, one in April, one in May. It's actually the March one it's linked to. And in doing so, it pulls through the current Mailchimp stats. This is a live kind of view, so each time you look at this, it may change. And I can actually click here to open up my Mailchimp campaign stats as well if I want to dive into that in a bit more detail. So that's one thing you get by linking up your MailChimp campaign to a corresponding Donify campaign. The other thing you get is that when you're looking at a constituent, you'll see timeline entries from linked campaigns in his or her timeline tab. So let's look again at Peter Baker. If we go up to his timeline, we will see, apart from the normal things like donations and when he subscribed to the list in the first place, You've got things like um, you know, the fact that he was part of a MailChimp campaign, newsletter March 2019. He opened it twice for some reason, didn't click on anything, didn't, it didn't bounce. And you'll get multiple entries in there for the various campaigns that you have linked and therefore made visible in timelines. In order to see them in the first place, you need to click MailChimp history. So click that, which means it switches that view on. Um, you only have to do it once, it'll show it for all constituents, it's not a per constituent setting, it's a per user setting. So once you've clicked it and enabled it, you will start to see um, MailChimp marketing history in constituent timelines. So let's uh, look then at how you get started. We're going to look through uh, steps one to eight, getting started at, towards the end of the presentation in a, moment, in a moment, but let's just zoom in on a couple of those uh, those important setup areas. So the very first thing you have to do is set up your MailChimp to be right. So you're going to create your list, you're going to create all those groups and tags on that list, you're going to create your sign up form. But in order to get it talking to Donify and or to get Donify enabling uh, it to be talked to, you have to create an API key. So let's look in a bit more detail here in MailChimp. You'll find it up in the admin account area hiding in the extras menu API keys now in my example here I've created numerous API keys in the past for demonstration and testing purposes you'll probably just have to create one and by creating it there's nothing clever to do you just um, click at the bottom here to create a key and in doing so it'll generate you a nice long key like this which you then copy and paste and put into your MailChimp Donify configuration settings um, on the API settings tab, paste it in there, click test and save. So that part is set up, that's the part that actually enables the Donify to MailChimp push. But the next thing you have to do when you set that up is set the mappings up because when you do that push, unless you create mappings for which groups and tags go to which purposes and tags in Donify, you're just going to get plain old email addresses and names going across with no actual nuanced information as to what they want to hear from you about, what their behaviours are, that kind of thing. So let's look in Donify at where you're going to create your settings and mappings rather. So we go into configuration, we're going to go into MailChimp settings. You'll see it has the two tabs. The API settings is the API key that we pasted in just now. And the linked MailChimp lists is where you say which list or lists do you want to link to, and if so, within them, what are their mappings. So if I click on the main list um, and open it there, it shows me all the mappings that I have between groups and tags and purposes here already. So that when I do a sync, 
from Donify or when the automated sync happens from MailChimp, it will apply these mappings. So let's have a look at one. This is the, the first one. This is the part on the tick box, if you remember, uh, in MailChimp where we're asking them to say, I want to receive emails about events. If they tick that, that gets mapped across to a purpose in Donify called events emails. Let's look back at Peter Baker on his profile. Scroll down to his permissions. We've got an events emails purpose there. And obviously you have to set these purposes up to correspond with the various MailChimp form settings. And you keep adding your mappings. So let's go back to the mappings again for a moment. Um, other mappings we have down here are tags. So we're saying if someone makes a donation up to a certain value, we've got an auto tag I reckon um, in Donify called donor low value, which is going to get automatically added to constituents who are low value donors. How does that map across? That maps across to donor low value in the tags area of your MailChimp list. Okay. So that's how you set up the mappings and as you can see on my example here we've got 10 different things mapping to each other within that list. So that's the next thing you do. And then setting up your webhook is the piece that will make Donify, um, sorry MailChimp, automatically push data into Donify. How does that happen? Well you go into your mailing list, excuse me, in here, go to lists, pick up your list. Within settings for your list you go into webhooks and you create your webhook. Now for that webhook you need to know two things. You need to know this URL or it'll be a slightly different one in your case and you need to know the last part of your URL which is your API key from Donify. So to get those in the system settings, go into it briefly now, your API key is shown in here. It's uh, normally a 10 character, seemingly random collection of characters, as opposed to a word like my one here. Uh, but you need to th that, so you need to copy and paste that. And you also need your, your the URL, which is um, the bit that goes before it, and that's available from the knowledge base. So all of that goes in to when you create a new webhook, and that will then mean that from that point forward, stuff that happens to a to a subscriber in MailChimp, whether a new subscriber, a change or an unsubscribe, will be pushed through automatically to your Donify. Okay. Moving on then to what may be um, a new thing for some people is looking at these email automations here in MailChimp. So in the in in the marketing world, this is referred to as marketing automation because MailChimp is email oriented, they call them email automations and in the fundraising world they're often referred to as supporter journeys. Whatever you call them, they are a series of communications that you push out to people depending upon an action that may have just happened. Some of those actions are actions that can be initiated and tracked from within Donify. Some of those actions may be things that are just within MailChimp such as someone joining a list or joining the list. So we have in my little screenshot example here um, an Easter campaign supporter journey. So this is saying when they join whatever this campaign is, which might be as a result of making a donation into the Easter campaign, uh, when that happens we send them this email, the welcome. This is just a standard um, MailChimp designed template based email that you can customize and put placeholders into and so on. And that will go out saying, you know, thank you for joining this campaign or whatever it says. And then in this example, one day after that happens, they get a next email, which is, did you know, whatever. And then seven days later, or five days later, on day seven, um, here's how we, we are using your contribution, your donation. So you can imagine a journey. It doesn't have to be this shape or this many steps. It can be any number of steps you like. But you can imagine how a journey can, can be defined. But that can be triggered from either things that happen within Donify or from um, things that happen in MailChimp. So from within Donify, you might be using um, an online giving widget on your website to capture 
card donations using Stripe or direct debit commitments using GoCardless. Either of those can be set up to trigger this journey or a journey like it. Same goes for the campaign donation page. Another thing that can trigger a, um, an automation is placing of a tag in someone's record in Donify. It could be an auto tag or a manually added tag. So a tag might be that they have, I don't know, um, recently um, expressed an interest in volunteering. You could send them a, uh, you could tag them on that basis and then that would kick off a supporter journey about getting involved with volunteering. Okay, that all happens when the next data push is sent sent across. the The widget one is instantaneous, but you can also set up a journey that is triggered just within Mailchimp. So when someone joins a list, they can be entered into a new automation automatically. Um, just to say that the widgets and the auto tagging features are features of the professional version of Donify, professional edition, so uh, not available in the essentials. So if you want those features, then uh, feel free to upgrade to get them. So then, just to finish off with, we're going to look at what are the steps to get you started in uh, in Mailchimp and the integration to Donify. And um, we've got a, an eight-step plan here, which helps you think through that process. So first of all get your list sorted. So create a list, it might be a brand new empty list, or it might be a you know, the most popular list that you have currently within your MailChimp account. If you've been using it for a while, you might have one that's most people, in which case you can then add other people into that, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, next thing, within that list, let's set up all the groups and tags um, so that it's got, it's capturing the right information that will help you segment, will help you add conditional content to your your email campaigns uh, so make sure groups and tags are right and then of course um, make the forms look right and you might want to hide certain groups from the forms just so they don't get prompted so if you do have other MailChimp lists to merge into your master MailChimp list then we have an article all about that on the um, knowledge base so I'll just refer you over to that because that's um, a little story in itself about how to do that and then once your list is looking good, um, set up all the corresponding purposes and tags in Donify. You may have some, some of them already, but make sure that your tags and your, your purposes are then um, set up nicely. A little tip would be to call them the same thing as you've called them in MailChimp. It just makes um, you know, remembering what links with what that much easier. Then do the API key thing in MailChimp. So get your API key and post, paste it into your settings in Donify, and then create the list mappings. So which tags go to which tags, which purposes go to which groups, etc. So if you're starting with an empty list, you might want to populate it either from another MailChimp list or from an external source. Remember, you need to have got permission from these people to email them in the first place. Um, or you might want to start from Donify and push information using that list push across to MailChimp uh, to do it first. Then create your webhook. That's the last thing you want to do really so that any new subscriptions then automatically flow from MailChimp to Donify and any subscriber updates and unsubscribes do the same. And then you're connected. You're done. So you're set up and, and, and ready to, to go. And then of course on an ongoing basis, you're going to be running campaigns. So before you run a campaign, at least before you run a campaign, push all the updates you've got from Donify to MailChimp. Um, then create and send those campaigns to your various segments, your subsets within that list. And then link up a corresponding campaign in Donify to see the stats and the timeline entries in, uh, in people's timelines. So that's it. Thanks for listening. Um, just point you again to some resources so the recording and the slides will be available on the Donify Chat Facebook group and we we'll probably make them available in the, in the knowledge base as well um, use support.donify.com to find all the knowledge base articles and uh, check the FAQs and what have you uh, specific questions feel free to create a request a, a ticket with our support team and they'll get back to you and of course MailChimp's own guides and tutorials to fill in the gaps that you may have about how MailChimp works. So thanks for your time and uh, 
See you next time.